Now that we've gathered these incredibly beautiful ingredients, we're gonna mix them together and make something perhaps even more beautiful. Um, just look at these violet blossoms. I mean, they're really quite stunning. And then you've got red buds. We've got a big, big mess of those, as we say here in the South, mess of greens and mess of red buds. Um, we don't need a whole lot of violet leaves. You know, Yul Gibbons called the violet nature's vitamin pill. And um, a lot of these vitamins are in the leaves, so we won't need a whole lot of those for our salad. But there, but um, we've got some. And I know I had a, had a, I had a wonderful um, green taste to things. And of course, right in this dish here is a plant that we um, often fight in our yards, the dandelion. And uh, here's the, here's the culprit, and here's dinner. All right. Um, dandelion, by the way, just for um, a fun little story, the name is from a French phrase, dentalion, tooth of the line. And you can see the little jagged edges there on these leaves. And uh, I like to think that that lion never brushed his teeth because he was a green teeth little beastie. So uh, what else do we have here in this big um, colander? We have chickweed. And we got this just in the right time. It's got little buds on it. And once chickweed flowers, um, it usually gets a little stringy and tough. So we got it just in the nick of time. It's still very succulent and tender. And I'm surprised my chickens haven't eaten it all up. But it's, I have a lot of it out there by the fence. So this will make the sort of the base of our salad. Um, the dandelions, by the way, that we've used were not like this. They were not in bloom. The ones that we're going to use in our salad were gathered over in a shady area, and the leaves, it had, they had not bloomed yet, and the leaves are a lot more tender before the flower sets bloom. Because once it uh, blossoms, the leaves get um, even more bitter. Uh, most of you might know that dandelion greens are a bitter green, um, but a few of them in a salad, especially when young and tender, are really quite tasty. And we mustn't forget our garlic. This is wild garlic. Some people call it wild onions, and that's okay, because they're in the same family and are really close relatives. Um, but most people know them as the field garlic or wild field garlic. Um, the name garlic comes from a, an ancient word meaning spear, and you can see the spear-shaped leaves. By the way, if you're gathering the wild garlic, or if you want to call it wild onion, you can. That's the way it is with common names. Um, do be careful. Make sure that there's not a white stripe that runs down the middle of your, of your uh, blade. Um, that could be Star of Bethlehem. That's a poisonous plant, so you don't want to be eating that. It looks a whole lot like, like uh, the wild garlic. But again, it'll, it'll have a white stripe that runs up the blade, and, and it won't smell garlicky or oniony either. So if you want to watch for that. Okay. Now that these have been washed and drained a little bit, we're just breaking them in little pieces. Um, it's pretty tender. If we'd waited till it, till it bloomed, it would get stringy and tough. So this is all kind of, kind of like um, bean sprouts, except they're really, really very good for you. And uh, the chickens know a good thing. By the way, this is a plant that Yule Gibbons, the late wild foods expert, um, called garden whoosh. Because once it gets growing in your garden, it sort of whooshes all over the place. And then you just pull it up in big mats. So it really is. It's quite a prevalent annual weed. So we might as well learn to eat our weeds and appreciate them while we're at it. When it goes into flower, it's got little white flowers on it that look like stars. And that's why this um, genus name of this plant is Stellaria. It means star-like. I like it when the common name, or when the, uh, well, yes, I like it when the common name and the Latin name both make sense. The chickweed makes sense because the chickens like it. Stellaria as a genus name makes sense because of the little white stars and the flowers. Now, as I said earlier, once it gets the little white stars on it, by that time the, the, the leaves aren't near as tender and succulent, so you probably don't want to eat it unless it's an emergency. This is a good emergency food. Um, Yul Gibbons also used to make a green drink. He'd take a lot of this and stick it in a blender, um, whirl it around uh, with a little water, and um, 
he might have used apple juice. I tried it with apple juice one time, and it was actually not bad. I don't think it would be very good with just water. Okay, now that we've got this nice bed of greens here, we're going to add a little bit more greens. These are those violet leaves, and uh, these were gathered in the shade, and these are, I, I looked for young tender ones, so they, I don't think this will need to be torn up much. I might tear them up just a little and add that to the chickweed. It'll give it a little bit more chew, I think. Besides that, it'll give it some extra vitamins. Again, a little. This is not the kind of a salad you would want to make a, uh, a chef salad out of. Trust me, I did that years and years ago. It was the only time I ever got sick with wild edibles. Actually, I didn't really get sick. I was just, how shall I say this politely, just up all night. Need I say more? <laughs>